and just continues its work. Thank you for coming. And the topic is International Criminal Court and Euromaidan. Will the international justice be applied? MP of Ukraine, um, Svetlana Zelishuk, when Jordan's international lawyer, global rights compliance, Vitaly Tichich, lawyer, uh, the member of uh, the advisory group, um, please take the floor. Good afternoon. Dear journalists, colleagues, today we are going to continue a topic about the uh, International Criminal Court. In the morning there was a session about uh, this, and uh, now we are speaking about uh, the um, that uh, in the draft law, this norm is included that will allow Ukraine to join the uh, ICC jurisdiction. But we have a different task now, and we are going to answer three questions. The first one is what happens now in the investigation sphere of, of the, uh, those, uh, those crimes and um, uh, Euromaidan events, and also what uh, Ukrainian civil society can do uh, in order to improve this uh, um, investigation and make it effective, and what is the role of uh, local justice in the framework and together with international justice. And uh, first of all, I would like to say why now? You know that um, recently the prosecutor of international criminal court to make a preliminary decision where she said that the facts are, uh, these facts are not enough in order to start the full-fledged investigation and uh, to name these events that happened during Euromaidan, the crimes against humanity. And, uh, and um, why it happened so, uh, my colleagues will tell you about this, and my part is mainly political. And the second, why we came to this press conference is that we are facing the second anniversary of the killings of uh, uh, the 20th and uh, 21st of November killings. And um, um, our um, justice system and law enforcement system should prove that we as a state can enforce and uh, we can um, deliver justice in this country. So um, today, um, Ukraine has the task and responsibility to enforce um, uh, the, and uh, to provide evidence and bring it to the International Criminal Court in order to get a positive decision as to the full-fledged full investigation and recognition of these events, uh, uh, the, the crime against humanity. And uh, also, I would like to stress that uh, now ICC got two uh, claims. One was made by the NGOs, uh, 12 uh, NGOs. Um, uh, in coordination with the um, uh, public initiative, uh, they gathered all the facts and uh, systemized the information, and we greet the efforts of our NGO partners. And uh, the same was done by the pow uh, power, the general prosecutor's office, uh, the evidence were provided to the ICC. But this uh, systemic information is not enough. Uh, in order to um, uh, to prove uh, on the international arena that these crimes that happened during Euromaidan were uh, are under jurisdiction of um, uh, J uh, J uh, CC. and what we can do the power and we as uh, uh, MPs uh, I am a uh, people's deputy they um, we should uh, um, remind our law enforcement bodies that they should get the information they should systematize it uh, that the uh, titushka uh, they were uh, ordered uh, uh, that there was not only anti maidan that was spontaneous there were systemic actions uh, they organized anti maidan titushkas that used weapons that used violence against uh, peaceful uh, protesters and uh, we got information that there was a decision 
by the Ministry of the Inter uh, Internal, Internal Affairs that they provided weapons to Tietushkas. Uh, the weapons that were registered in um, the Ministry of uh, Interior. And we should provide them information in the proper way. We should uh, show that there were um, definite tasks, counteractions, and uh, some uh, uh, inju uh, injury that were uh, made by some uh, to, uh, that were made to some people and uh, uh, mass media representatives suffered and law enforcement officers uh, shot at journalists and uh, that uh, these actions were not spontaneous and it should be proven that uh, these were systemic actions orders from the part of the power and um, uh, by uh, proving these facts uh, f from my point of view we will reach the goal and uh, these um, crimes will be qualified in a proper way. And also there's a task uh, for NGOs and civil society. We will control and monitor the situation, but now we should uh, unite our efforts and NGOs, people, activists around the country. Uh, we should gather in the information that will prove system um, systemic uh, systemic, uh, and, uh, uh, and the geographic spread of these events. And um, in this context, uh, one uh, uh, point I would like to mention, um, we would uh, work with the journalists. We want to gather all the information about all those damages and losses and injuries that uh, uh, media suffered uh, uh, during Euromaidan and to provide this information to uh, JCC. And in such a way, we may make a conclusion. Uh, I would like to stress that today uh, Ukraine has a very serious task. We should prove that um, during Euromaidan there were uh, crimes against humanity. And power and civil society uh, should unite and cooperate in order to find and systemize, unify this information and to provide it to M G J C C. And also today we need a control uh, from the side of the media and parliament. Uh, we should uh, overview the uh, actions of uh, law enforcement officers in order to make this uh, uh, process uh, transparent and uh, open. And now I give the floor to my colleague, and he will tell uh, us about the investigation at the stage. Uh, good afternoon. <coughs> I represent the lawyers uh, who have united uh, the group of lawyers. Uh, uh, we represent uh, the uh, the victims, uh, starting with November 2013 until February 21st, when the massive shooting took place, uh, we can speak of the statute of this uh, investigation because we sh have facts about the statutes of the proceedings criminal proceedings. It is not a news that the domestic investigation is in the awful condition. Its status is awful. Uh, we made many declarations uh, and announced uh, many uh, uh, our, uh, we disclosed many uh, publicized uh, our petitions which we filed to the top level governmental agencies and ministries. The investigation during the second year is in a very bad condition. What we expect from the International Criminal Court as uh, uh, Ms. Svetlana said, uh, we together with the institution in institutions uh, um, under the management of the Center of Freedoms, we expect uh, that uh, it is obvious that ICC can't uh, investigate uh, 
uh, all crimes uh, conducted by each perpetrator. Uh, it uh, can only address the top management, the cases about the leaders of the country, and the fact uh, we, the facts, we, the evidence which uh, the ICC uh, may have uh, to uh, appeal to the uh, top um, ministries, uh, this authorities of Ukraine, it could be of influence as concerns the problem expressed in the annual report uh, that uh, uh, the jurisdiction of the ICC um, cannot be uh, applied uh, because uh, there is not in, uh, in enough information to find that crimes against humanity were committed. Uh, the joining uh, of uh, uh, the cases due to the uh, because there was a centralized orders, there were centralized orders uh, uh, issued during Yevramaidan uh, events, uh, which issued orders and commands. Uh, uh, so uh, we uh, uh, pressed, and the case was uh, joined. The cases were joined. And now, in all criminal proceedings, uh, and uh, 228 case, uh, which is uh, very famous, this is the case of Yanukovych group. Uh, it goes about the existence of uh, a criminal organization. The criminal organization is only uh, possible when there is some hierarchy and coordination of actions. This is what Ms. Svetlana mentioned. According to the ICC's interim report, this is the lack uh, of information which should be investigated in deep on the national level. And the relevant evidence should be transferred and submitted to the ICC. We uh, believe that we have enough evidence. The question is uh, how professional this evidence is re uh, uh, registered and in what scope, whether in the full scope it would be submitted to the uh, ICC prosecutor. Uh, we will take uh, part in uh, this uh, process and provide the evidence. My name is Wayne Jordash and I'm an international criminal lawyer working for Global Rights Compliance. And I'd like to say something about the ICC's preliminary conclusion, the prosecutor's preliminary conclusion, and the interrelationship between domestic justice and international justice. The ICC prosecutor, as we know, has released a report about the Euromaidan event. In summary, her conclusions are that no war crimes were committed and there is not enough information to find that crimes against humanity were committed. On this basis, the ICC does not have jurisdiction. The ICC's preliminary, prosecutor's preliminary conclusion is based on the following reasoning. One, for war crimes, there's no information to satisfy the requirement of an armed conflict. In relation to crimes against humanity, the situation's a bit more complex, as you've heard from my colleagues. The following elements must exist to prove that a crime against humanity has been committed. One, there was an act committed outlined in Article 7 1A to K of the Rome Statute. Example, an act of torture, murder, persecution, and so on. Number two, that the act was committed as part of a widespread or committed or, or systematic attack. Three, the attack was directed against a civilian population and was pursuant to a state or organizational policy which involved the multiple commission of the acts in Article 7.1. 
And finally, that the perpetrator, when committing the act, had knowledge of the attack and the perpetrator intended to further the attack. So, in short, the prosecutor's preliminary conclusion on these issues is that, one, the information she has received demonstrated a number of acts that constitute Article 7 acts, i.e., killings, torture, persecution, and inhumane acts. These were committed, she has found. And two, that these acts were directed against a civilian population pursuant to a state policy. However, it is important to appreciate the nuance of the ICC prosecutor's findings. For those who are present who, or who have an understanding of what happened, it will make interesting reading and it is a good starting point for understanding what information the ICC prosecutor now requires. The ICC prosecutor considers there is limited information at this stage to support the conclusion that the alleged attack was widespread or systematic. She reasons as follows. One, that the attack was too limited in the intensity, number of violent acts and geographic scope to conclude that the crimes were widespread. And two, that much of the identified violence was not sufficiently serious and that some of the acts were reactionary and not part of a planned, calculated campaign against the protest movement. Therefore, she cannot conclude that the crimes were systematic. Now, in summary, and this is the critical aspect, the ICC prosecutor, although she has found a state policy, has not found that the state authorities planned, organized, developed, and executed a plan. Only that the security services on the ground used excessive forces in parts of Kiev and that the state authorities failed to stop them. That is critical. First, she found that the policy to attack was not part of a deliberate coordinated plan of violence methodologically carried out against the protest movement. Rather, it arose due to the excessive and indiscriminate use of force by state security forces during the public order operations and the consistent failure of the Ukrainian authorities at multiple levels to take any meaningful or effective action to prevent or deter. And secondly, that the majority of the attacks took place were not carried out in a consistent, organized manner or on a regular or continual basis. That is, not on a daily basis, but mainly on the 30th of November, 1st of December, 10th and 11th of December, 19th to the 24th of January, and 18th to the 20th of February 2014, and in a limited geographical area within Kiev. However, it's critical to note that the door is not closed. Instead, the ICC prosecutor appears to be setting out with a degree of clarity what exactly she needs and what needs further clarification. It is now for civil society and government actors to marshal their collective investigatory abilities and focus on these requirements. For the Ukrainian authorities, the ICC prosecutor has found there's a policy to attack. However, she has not concluded that high-level officials agreed in advance to a plan to attack the protesters or the nature of that plan. If the Ukrainian authorities have information that the violence was calculated and driven by the state authorities and not only by the excesses on the ground, this needs to be sent to the ICC prosecutor. Any information that shows the full extent of the involvement of high-level officials in the events, the full geographical extent and detail of that plan, how it was put into action, the range of private or public resources used by these top-level officials to organize and execute the attack, and how it unfolded from the top downwards over the weeks and the months is relevant and probative. Для громадянського суспільства 
its efforts on finding and reporting information showing, one, that the acts of violence were against a larger group of victims and or covered a larger geographical area in other locations in Ukraine outside of Maidan than currently identified in the information or facts submitted to date. Two, that those acts of violence, including those in Kiev, were constituted of sufficiently serious acts of violence. And three, that the acts of violence were the result of a planned and calculated methodology or system, again, from the top down, and not merely the result of panicked, excessive, or indiscriminate responses to the protest movement. Finally, having focused on the ICC, it's important to remember the ICC is a court of last resort. It will only step in when Ukraine shows itself to be unwilling or unable to prosecute. And even then, as my colleagues have indicated, it will only prosecute a handful of top-level accused. In the best case scenario, we are talking about five or so accused. The majority of the alleged perpetrators will not be tried at the ICC. Ukraine maintains the primary responsibility and duty to prosecute these offences. A few high-profile cases in The Hague are a start, but no more than that. The best justice involves Ukraine taking genuine ownership in a series of local trials. This allows justice to be accessible to all, particularly the victims, and it allows the victims to see the justice that they deserve and understand in a manner that respects the legal culture and traditions of this country. This is no easy task. Any country would struggle to investigate and prosecute this level of criminality, but it can be done with energy, time and resources. It also has the benefit of creating an opportunity to reform and capacity build Ukraine's legal infrastructure, developing a system that is modern, consistent with international legal norms and best practices, and able to meet the demands of the rule of law. Thank you. Thank you. And final remarks, or we go to questions and comments. Dear colleagues, do you have some comments or questions to our speakers? Please introduce yourself. Markian Galabala, an advocacy group. And I have a question to Svetlana. Uh, what is your att uh, attitude to the postponing uh, for three years of uh, ratification. on the ratification of the Rome statues? And uh, I know that MPs would like to introduce the amendment so that to cancel this postponement. Uh, thank you for this question. At this stage, uh, to my mind, it is more important for us uh, to make the things which we have uh, told you about today. Ukraine uh, have uh, uh, submitted uh, the declaration. Uh, 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 and uh, this uh, provides us uh, the opportunity uh, to be inside the jurisdiction of ICC. At the same time, uh, we are a young, uh, um, we are young MPs in the parliament. Uh, uh, we tried uh, to push for amendments to the Constitution of Ukraine and uh, uh, so that we are within the jurisdiction of uh, ICC. Ukraine should not postpone uh, the Rome Statute ratification, but the President uh, uh, really signed the decree uh, and uh, in three years, uh, the statute will be ratified. Uh, this was based on the experience of the state of Georgia. That th this could be used by the Russian Federation uh, against Ukrainian soldiers. Uh, first of all, uh, we ha should have political will to join ICC, and we have it. The second is to put uh, lots of efforts uh, to demand that our law 
enforcement officers uh, uh, work, uh, demonstrate high performance, good performance. And the third thing which Mr. Wayne said, uh, we need to understand the ratio between the Ukrainian domestic justice and the international justice. The institutions should be built inside the country if the ICC will issue a positive conclusion. And in five or ten uh, years, uh, we will get uh, the um, judgment uh, by ICC that uh, the previous president of Ukraine, along with other dozen of persons, uh, are guilty of in Yevromaidan uh, crimes. There were uh, hundreds of people here in Ukraine. They will remain not sentenced if the domestic justice system doesn't work. Thank you. One more question to you. Uh, how can we demand from law enforcement bodies uh, any positive changes because for two years they have done nothing and nobody was punished from those who shot into people and from those who gave orders to shoot? Uh, how can we influence on them? Thank you for your question. What can we do? <clears throat> Much uh, depends on uh, civil organizations, uh, civil society organizations, as well as mass media sources, uh, s NGOs, uh, and uh, civil society plat platform coordinated by the Center of Civil f uh, Liberties. Uh, it works now, it replaces the functions of the General Prosecutor's Office. Uh, we, as a parliament, can do many things. I would like to announce that on uh, December 15th, we will have the roundtable discussion on ICC matters. The speaker of the parliament and heads of different committees uh, will be present at the meeting, and we will address the issues of this Yevromaidan case here in an ICC. And, uh, as for me, I will provide submission to them uh, to find out uh, how they would like to represent uh, these facts at the roundtable discussion meeting. Uh, Mr. Garbachuk uh, uh, p um, delivered an announcement where he reported uh, on the investigation of uh, Yevromaidan cases, but we are interested in very specific results, very specific findings. The first result which we would like to achieve is uh, uh, one important decision, and the second is uh, domestic justice to punish all people guilty in the uh, crimes of Yevromaidan. Uh, Ms. Svetlana, uh, I have a question to you. You mentioned uh, that uh, we are uh, afraid that uh, ICC, uh, that um, Russian Federation may file a case on Ukrainian soldiers in the east of Ukraine. Uh, do you think that the politicians and mass media should talk? Uh, should report that the Ukrainian soldiers also conduct some crimes uh, in the East. Uh, then, uh, so what about ICC trying the cases of Ukrainian soldiers? As a country, we should uh, provide evidence that the justice uh, uh, works in Ukraine in a uh, uh, 
good man. Uh, both law enforcement uh, bodies and courts, uh, and we investigate all the cases, whatever the guilty persons are. And when uh, our president signed the uh, agreement of association with the European Union, um, uh, we our president took obligations uh, on the rule of law. We should be open to the justice, but ICC is the final uh, instance in this uh, hierarchy of justice. Uh, but in the first turn, on the initial level, Ukrainian law enforcement officers who, do, who should work uh, in the due manner, uh, they should investigate any cases, even uh, the cases against Ukrainian soldiers, if they commit any crimes. Uh, do you have any more questions? There are no questions, uh, uh, so uh, we will we'll wait for you next time. Colega, 